Hello guys, welcome back to the shop for Project Archie, episode 53. I'm Chris Bowden, and today we're going to be playing with a palm nut. This is our palm nut. You'll have a thing that looks like that. So you're gonna need your palm nut, and you're gonna need one of these. This is a countersink. Looks like that. It's a funny looking drill bit end mill type thing. I guess you could use that for an end mill. It's gonna last for five seconds, but you could use that for an end mill. All right, so all we gotta do is countersink our palm nut. And the reason why is you can see that those are squared edges, right? Even though they're round. The, the circle, this is just a, a flat plane with holes drilled through, so there's a 90 degree angle there. And we're going to want to put a countersunk screw in there because we want to sit flat. So we need to create a space for that, that countersunk screw to go. And in order to Create the space for the countersunk screw. You have to countersink the receiving thing for the countersink of the countersunk screw to sink into, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill this out a little bit like that. This is a delicate operation and it's a great time to talk about feeds and speeds. So when you have some manner of cutter cutting, some manner of thing getting cut, there's two main variables that you can control usually that come into play. And that is the speed of the cutting point and how fast you're feeding it in there. So the, the speed is how fast your drill bit is turning. Okay, that's speed. This has two speeds. I got, I got zero to one and it moves. Hey, look, there's a little dot on the back. Okay, so I got zero to one, and that's my speed. I've got zero to two on here, so I can go to higher speeds. Okay, and then you have your feed. Your feed is, with a drill, how fast you're going forward, or kind of how hard you're pushing, kind of. That counts. So, as a rule, a good thing to learn is like with drills, the smaller the bit, the faster it spins. And a lot of people come out and say, well, there's really no hard and fast rules and numbers. Actually, there are. They publish whole tables of them for use in industry. And, and these are important and they change, they evolve because the speeds and feeds that worked great 30 years ago still work if you're cutting that material with that thing but we have like machine tools now with carbide bits and, and a way higher quality of carbide than you can get like 20, 30 years ago. And we have different materials. It's not just space age aluminum. We have internet age aluminum now, which is way better. And because of that in industry, this matters a lot because if you're like, like with this robot, with these parts, these are all CNC machines. Well, if you're a guy who owns a CNC machine and you're making this part, you get paid by the part, not the hour. If you can make a thousand parts in an hour, you're gonna make a lot more money than if you can make a thousand parts in a day. So speeds and feeds matter a lot. When you're dealing with drilling, even with hand tools, speeds and feeds matter because it's what keeps you from either burning up or breaking drill bits. With this particular application, we got to be really delicate with this because this is just soft plastic. It's probably nylon. And it'd be very easy for us to just hog right through it, especially since I got a brand new countersink here and my rugged manly Milwaukee power tool here. So we want to hold this very firmly. And the best way to do this would be with a drill press with a stop where you can just boop, just kiss it and make sure you don't overfeed it. I'm going to do this in the worst possible way because it's probably how you're going to do it at home. I'm going to do this in a vise. You can, if you want, because this is nylon and I've got a nice new countersink, you could countersink this by hand. I think that would work. You might want to put this in a, a better holder, but you could just take that and just screw it in there. Yeah, we're already cutting. Look at that. See, you can see it, that edge here. You could absolutely countersink this by hand. And that's... That's a nice, easy, controllable way to do it. And if you don't have power tools, that's okay. You can get these at your big box store in the tool section for a couple bucks. You don't need 
the greatest, most awesome tungsten carbide countersink. You don't need to go out and buy like an Iskar or a Sandvik. The, this is a Ryobi. I know, but it'll work. We're just cutting plastic. So you can do this by hand. I'm going to chuck it up in a vise because I have a nice set of soft draws right here. And put it in here and I'm gonna grab one of my screws that I'm countersinking to. And these are gonna be your M3 by 10 flat head, flat countersunk socket head cap screw. I'm gonna say flat head cap screw? I don't know, screw names get really weird. And I'm gonna drop this in there and I wanna, I wanna see, because we're not gonna need a lot of countersink. These have a really shallow head. Oh yeah, I'm almost there just on the one by hand. So this is going to be super easy. We'll just put this right in the vise. So we want a high speed. We're going to we're going to spin this up in second gear. And and you can't hold down here on a drill because the whole thing moves. So we're going to grab it up here and I'm going to brace my hand. And when you're doing something like this, get it get it tight to your body, have a good lock and and hold it with two hands. And that'll let you just ease down on it. That might be enough. Uh, let's get a little more. Oh, that's, that looks good. Okay, and we'll do this one. And countersinking is a, a pretty delicate operation because you're not trying to drill through. Usually if you've got you know something like a drill, on your thing, you're, you're, you're heading through. And with countersinking, you have to exercise a lot of restraint because you specifically don't want to just, oh God, that's perfect. Look at that. Look at that hole. Okay, so here's how, here's your go no gauge. Okay, well look at this. I put the screw in and that one sits just a little bit proud. Okay, it's stick just a hair. This one is flush. That's beautiful. Let's see our third. Yeah, that's that's good. That's very good. I'm going to give this one just a kiss. And now we'll check our countersink. Oh, I could be on the TV. All right, that's it. That's everything you need to know on countersink and holes. So now we're gonna grab the J5 carrier. It looks like this. And this fits right in there. Make sure to line the holes up. Okay. Drop it right down in there. And then we can put our screws in. Now for your screws, we're using our M3 by 10 flat heads. And I'm just going to start them all by hand. Back till it clicks, run it down. Beautiful. That looks nice. Look at that. That's so pretty. Could they be a little bit more countersunk? Yes. I might actually, I don't know. That's, I think they're good. I don't know. If we have any issues, then I'll bring them in a little. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to just super sink them right down in there. It's, you can countersink them below the surface, and I don't, I don't want to do that. I want them to be just just right there because they're within like easily within 15,000 so I'm calling it good 
All right, and there you go. That's your step. You should have that. And you have now learned a little bit about speeds and feeds, which is a really excellent topic to just dig into. Just pull up some YouTube videos, type in speeds and feeds, and it's it's a whole rabbit hole. There are people that spend whole careers mastering that. It's it's a thing. It's really cool. It's a good thing to know, even, even at this level in the home shop. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden, and as always, we'll see you next time.